Hey everybody, this is Geneva of Geneva's Closet Talk Show. Please make sure you like and share this video and subscribe to Geneva's Closet if you haven't already done so right here on YouTube. And you can follow me on Facebook at what? At Geneva's Closet. And you can email me at Geneva's Closet 22 at gmail.com. Now, let's get into the news. So, you all know Lynn Whitfield. She's actually one of my favorite black actresses. And you all know who I'm talking about. She has played on Eve's Bayou. She's played as Josephine Baker on The Josephine Baker Story. She has even played with Martin Lawrence on A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Now she is currently playing on Oprah's Greenleaf. Well, the other day I was being nosy doing what I normally know how to do. And I came across some information that said that her family has done some wonderful things in the black community so check out this little team first here's a little backstory on miss whitfield she was born in baton rouge louisiana the daughter of jean Nee butler who was african-american an officer of finance agency and valerian if i'm saying that correctly smith who is creo a dentist she is the eldest of four children and a third generation bfa graduate from howard university her dentist father was instrumental in developing lynn's initial interest in acting as he was a prime figure in forming community theater in native baton rouge first garnering attention on stage by studying and performing with the black repertory company in washington dc she married one of the company's co-founders and pioneers of black theater playwright director actor van till whitfield in 1974 to 1978 Lynn was married two times. Her second marriage was from 1990 to 1992 to director Brian Gibson, and they had a daughter together by the name of Grace. Now, this is where the tea is about to come in. And I know you're probably wondering why do I have a cartoon chicken up there, but it's all about to make sense. Did you know that Lynn Whitfield's family has ties to the chicken shacks in Louisiana? Oh, yes, people, yes. The Dell Pit Chicken Shacks are because of this man right here, Thomas H. Delpit, a.k.a. Tommy, which is Lynn's grandfather or step-grandfather. Uh, I don't know. You don't have to let me know because it's a long story, people, but let me break it down to you. Lynn's grandmother on her mother's side, Edme Celestine Lemotte, Lemot, whatever, it's a French last name, and I don't even know why I'm trying because I have a hard enough time saying English names, but whatever. She was born September 12th, 1915 in Lobdell, Louisiana, and her parents were Marcia and Bertha Jackson Lemot, or Lemot you know, the French last name, but AKA she was also known as Mimi and she graduated from high school in 1932 at some high school that's supposed to be known in Baton Rouge, Louisiana called McKinley High School. But anyway, in 1934, she met Thomas H. Dale Pitt, Tommy, you know, the one I was telling you about the chicken shacks and stuff. And then they had four children. I'm actually going to read from Ed Mays, a.k.a. Mimi's, a.k.a. Lynn's grandmother's obituary that I found online, which describes when Ed May met Tommy. And it says that she had plans on becoming a teacher, but they were postponed when she met Thomas H. Tommy Dale Pitt. They were married in December 1934 and welcomed their first child. Ed May and Tommy were a dynamic team who became part in business as well as in life. The young wife and mother helped to launch Suburban Ice Cream Parlor, the forerunner of their signature enterprise, the Chicken Shack. With only 35 cents in capital, Tommy parlayed his unique recipe for fried chicken batter into the legendary restaurant, which became a South Baton Rouge landmark, first at its original location on East, East Boulevard, now named Named Thomas H. Dale Pitt Drive in his honor. Really, bitch, he got his own street. And then on Lesworth Street, where the family also lived, Ed May was the hands-on financial 
wizard who even ran the cash register when needed. As the business grew, she and her husband were able to provide employment at the chicken shack for generations of families and students. Okay, now that was a lot. And the thing about it is that I am not even done. And I know you probably like, really, bitch, there's more to the story. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I told you. Her family had a lot going on in Louisiana. Okay, so now we got Ed May and Thomas Dale Pitt. They're running the chicken shack with the children, living their life and doing their thing. And then in 1959, Dale Pitt dies. And five years later, Ed May, a.k.a. Mimi, a.k.a. Lynn Whitfield's grandmother, remarries. And she marries Dr. Leo S. Butler in 1964, who was a well-known physician and family friend. And then they went on to have four more children. And one of their children end up being Jean or Jean. I think it could be Jean. I don't know if I'm doing the most by doing Jean and this, her name is Jean. But whatever, Lynn Whitfield's mother... And there's some cool information about Dr. Leo Stanley Butler, Ed May's second husband, too. He was born August 12, 1899 in Burtville, a small community just south of Baton Rouge. He graduated from Baton Rouge College School in 1918. He was the first male to receive a diploma from what became McKinley. Remember McKinley, I was telling you that that's where Ed May graduated from, and I said it was something interesting about that school. Well, he was the first color person, black person, to graduate from to get a diploma from that school. He completed both undergraduate and medical studies at Howard University in Washington, D.C. In 1926, he began a lifelong practice of medical and community service. He was known as the Dean of Black Physicians. He was named General Practitioner of the Year by the National Medical Association in 1962. Both the East Baton Rouge Medical Society and East Baton Rouge Medical Association honored him for outstanding community service. For years, Dr. Butler gave countless hours of his time and talents to the Blooden, if I'm saying that correctly, home. He later served as chairman of the board. He served as director of student health services for years at Southern University. Dr. Butler served on numerous boards and commissions. He supported the Boy Scouts, the YMCA, the Red Cross, and other, including the Blooden home. He was one of the founders of First Federal Savings and Loan Association and served as first vice president. After over a half century of service in the community, Dr. Butler retired from active practice in 1977. He died in September 1978. And get this, people, he also have a Dr. Leo S. Butler Community Center. Yes, people, I'm telling you, just like Dale Pitt got a street named after him, Yes, Butler has a community center, and it says the Dr. Leo S. Butler Community Center is centrally located for the persons of this community services, the residents of South Baton Rouge in their social, civic, medical, cultural, recreational, and spiritual pursuits. When I first found out all this information and figured out what was really going on, I was like, okay, Ed May, a.k.a. Mimi, she hit the jackpot with both of her husbands. So you see what was going on. She was married twice. First, she was married to Dale Pitt, who had the entrepreneur spirit, went and opened up some chicken shacks with his wife. Still going on to this day, let the record show, and got a whole street named after him. Okay, with the first husband. Then five years after he passed away, then she married a doctor, a doctor, Dr. S. Butler, who got a whole community service um, named after him and was doing the dang on thing in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And by the way, it was because of him, they had a child together, which ended up being Jean, which is Lynn's mother. So now we see how the connection go. So I would assume that Dale Pitt would be Lynn's step grandfather. It's not her biological grandfather, but nevertheless, I'm pretty sure all her, her uncles and aunts that came from Dale Pitt, she would consider those her aunts and her uncles. She wouldn't dismiss them just because they have a different grandfather. But both of her grandfathers, 
non-biological and biological she got some great connection things going on there in louisiana but we are not done there because we ain't gonna throw miss edme aka mimi under the bus as if she just hit the jackpots with her husbands because she also did some fabulous things now remember i told you edme wanted to be a teacher before she married dale pitt started having the kids and the business and all of that stuff but it says edme enrolled at southern university in 1949 to fulfill her life held ambition to become a teacher time had not not diminished her academic prowess and she proudly graduated from Southern in 1954 with honors with two-year-old daughter Lisa in tow all while raising her grandson as her own and even her granddaughter Lynn came and lived with her through her high school years Edme was still recognized as one of the most proficient educators in the parish during the early stages of desegregation Edme was transferred to then predominantly white Glen Oaks High School later she taught at Baton Rouge High Edme retired from the school system in 1977 when Dr. Butler's health deteriorated. She was devoted to his care until his death in 1978. She was also a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority for over 50 years. In 1989, she was honored by the Baton Rouge chapter of the Lynx Incorporated as a community leader. In 2014, Edme passed away. This video is sponsored by Man Crates. Man Crates have brand new personalized designs and gift collections just for him. We pack awesome man's gifts into army style wooden crates with the crowbar for opening. We also have ammo cans, jerky grams, and DIY project kits designed for guys of all interests and hobbies. Man Crates has the perfect holiday gift for any guy. So if you're interested in getting that awesome gift for your guy then go to mancrates.com today okay people i'm gonna try to wrap this up because i know that this is a lot of information but i don't know if y'all are just as intrigued as i am only because we never know who these celebrities are you know we thinking that they just did some auditions and they just came from out the woodworks but you never know who they are or their background and i just find her to be very interesting and her information especially because of the role she played on eve's bayou like a well-to-do black french creole type of family with deep down roots in the parish of baton rouge and miss of louisiana and then come to find out you know that's really what her life is all about but but anyway to wrap this up this is her father and her father name is dr valerian smith if i'm saying that correctly but anyway this is what it says her father dr valerian smith ran a successful dental practice for decades in her native baton rouge dr smith was a graduate of howard university and in addition to his dental practice was thoroughly engaged in the performing arts in louisiana Ain't that about some? Who even knew? And it says Dr. Smith was not only a dentist, but a dedicated composer and theater fan. Dr. Valerian Smith, who died in 1992, was the writer and producer behind tracks by the Baton Rouge group Black Blood and the Chocolate Pickles, including the extraordinary funk dirge Mississippi Mud, on which Smith also played. Lynn's mother, Valerie Jean Butler, is president of the Louisiana Housing Finance Commission. Now, I don't know if she's still doing that because I'm reading from an article from years ago, but hey, she was. And it says that Lynn is a third generation Howard University alumni where her parents met at Howard University. Her maternal grandfather went to Howard's medical school. Her paternal grandfather and father went to Howard's dental school. And let's not forget that Dr. Smith and his former wife, Jean, had four children, Lynn, a daughter, Kim, a daughter, Shani, and a son, if I'm not mistaken, his name is Valerian too. I think he's a junior named after his father. Last but not least, the Del Pitt Chicken Shacks that was started by Lynn Whitfield's grandmother, Edme, and her step-grandfather, Thomas H. Del Pitt, is still in existence today, and that's a fabulous thing, considering the fact that it got started back in the 1930s. The article that I'm reading from is from 2014, and it says, since the time, Tom 
Thomas Delpit founded Chicken Shack in 1935 with less than a dollar in his pocket, 22 years old, with a third grade education. The restaurant has remained a fixture in Baton Rouge dining for 77 years. Many trials and tribulations have long set back the opening of new Delpit Enterprises restaurants, and the company has even had to close two restaurants over the years. But this summer, Joe Delpit expanded the family-owned chain again when the third Chicken Shack restaurant opens at the former Popeyes. Now remember, Thomas H. Del Pitt and Edme had children before she got with her second husband, the doctor, who, you know, they end up having a child together, which was Jean, Lynn's mother. Well, yeah, Thomas and Edme had a child, which is Joe, which is Lynn's uncle, step uncle, whatever. It's her family. But it says in 1958, Joe Del Pitt took over ownership of the restaurant that his father, Thomas Del Pitt, opened in front portion of the family shotgun home on East Boulevard. And get this people, as if Joe keeping the Chicken Shack family restaurant still going to this day isn't good enough, Joe also became the first black city councilman in Metro Baton Rouge and later became state representative for District 63. And he helped to establish the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus. I had a lot of fun doing research on Lynn Whitfield and her family. I found her story to be very interesting just to know that she got some deep down roots going on over there in Baton Rouge. Uh, Louisiana and now when I see her in movies and shows and she playing like she got money and her family is well to do I know that that's actually the life that she lived and I also thought about this when I was putting this video together in the movie Eve's Bayou that she played in and I can't remember who played her husband I can't even remember his name but anyway in the movie he played as a doctor and ain't that some stuff when considering the fact that a lot of her family members are doctors so yeah it's pretty interesting Yeah, I got to meet a man I've been listening to for years, and tonight you get to meet him too. They are messages meant for a moment. You reached the chicken shack at 413 North Acadian Thruway. Meant to help us with bad weather, floods, violence in our streets, or just loving one another. Messages tucked behind a world famous menu. Red means, sweet peas, snap beans, mustard greens, candy yam, peach cup. And they all start right here. Every morning during the week, for the last 17 years, Chicken Shack manager Troy Carter menu records the menu for the day. Seven steak, tender as a mother's love. It's on the Nine restaurant's answering machine. But then, Troy adds an extra special helping on the end. Yes, what an awesome day it is to be alive and well known the land of the living. God has truly smiled on us once again. The better to Whatever's taking place, maybe it's the weather is bad that day. And I just want somebody to drive safe because the life they save just may be their own. 930 to place your order. Remember, whatever you do today, make the day count. Don't let it just be another day, but do something positive that you, at the end of the day, you will say, I've done a great thing, and the day would have mattered to you and someone else. Listen, we dodged that storm on yesterday, so we are up thanking God for our survival. And today is Good Friday, so we want to do something good on today. Let's put our guns down that we will have no killing in the next 72 hours. Uh, I was in church um, 17 years ago on a Sunday evening. My pastor has a, a, a slogan, uh, no souls left behind. And he challenged the congregation, Greg. He said that we have to take the ministry to the marketplace. And I thought about I can't slow down the flow of the business but I put the recording on every day, so it's something I could say that could make a difference. People from all over the country have found Troy's messages. A truck driver actually made a delivery at closing time, heard the message, and then stayed over just to meet Troy. A vendor in Maryland, she called three weeks in a row to hear the messages during a rough spot in her life. 
come together like the Bible say and reason one with another. And even though it's Troy's voice on the recording, the message he says is always straight from God. His recordings speak directly to you. Welcome to the Chicken Shack. Reminding young people, instead of looking for a manly way to settle the score, to look for a godly way. I try to be an inspiration to somebody. I want to see a change. So I'm thinking about whatever's taking place in the world on that particular day. Uh, maybe someone lost their life overnight and I'm asking for prayer for their family. I may not even know the family, but I'm asking for prayer. I want to encourage that family to let them know that through this hard time, you're going you're gonna to make it. God going to give you the strength. Oh, the red beans. The Chicken Shack has been a Baton Rouge staple for decades. It ain't finger licking good. It's knuckle sucking good. After, after you eat it, you got to suck your knuckles. Its menu as familiar as family. This is our chef right here. He's been doing this since he was about four or five years old. And while obviously known for its chicken and then, of course, all of the sides. Mustard greens, candy yams, mac and cheese, cornbread dressing. It's that off the right menu there. message that keeps some of them coming back. People call constantly and say, I'm in Livingston Parish, I'm in Dinner Spring. I just called to hear the message. A, a folk are calling, and I'm thinking they're calling for lunch, and they'll say, I say, lunch is over with. No, I want to hear what the message is for the day, y'all. If this message could change lives, if it can cause people to stop doing the negatives and do positive, it's all worth me doing this every day. So after hearing enough to make you hungry, it's the perfect dessert. The man and his message are simple in the sweetest way. If you don't know Christ, get to know Christ while the blood is yet running warm in your veins. That's, that's the message in the heart. Just get to know Christ. Thank you, God bless you, and have a great day. What a terrific guy there. So you're probably wondering, what is the number? 383-0940. You can call it, you'll get the menu, and then you'll get Troy's special message. Organization of diverse individuals and organizations that's together for women to connect, promote, and empower women. And 25 years ago, they wanted to establish a place where ladies, uh, African American and Caucasian, could have a place to pull their resources and address issues in health, wellness, community issues. And, and that's what we're celebrating the history of Women's Council honoring past presidents on Friday night. Uh, Saturday, we have our Silver Magnolia uh, luncheon uh, honoring ladies 70 of age or uh, older uh, that has. Uh, milestones in the community and then also we have 50 speakers in one day at the Tracy Center. Uh, we have uh, our actual sponsors that make sure this happened. Uh, Turner Law Firm, we have uh, BR Weekly, uh, also too we have um, Total Care in Injury and so we are uh, super excited. <laughs> Performance wing, Dr. V. E. Smith, or Valeria E. Smith. I had no idea that my father's name was on that. And then we went into the auditorium, and I want you to know they gave me the performance of royalty. <laughs> they acted Shakespeare for me, and they danced me gospel, and it was a magnificent, magnificent day. Community and the state. 
have been honored over the past decade, among them my late father, Dr. Valerian E. Smith, who was a dentist and a composer, who was a trailblazer in this community. And I want to recognize his sister who is here, my aunt, Thelma Williams, and uh, yes, ma'am, and my cousins, Allison and Alicia. From Grambling, Louisiana. I want to also my grandfather, my Paul Paul, Dr. Leo S. Butler, was inducted into this Hall of Fame, who was not only a family doctor and a community leader, but he was a healer. People knew when they went to Dr. Butler they were gonna get healed, if there was any possibility of being better, he would do whatever he could. He was inducted into this. I thank you for that as well. And on to, oh my goodness, Joe Delpit, <laughs> who is also a member of my family, has been inducted. I'm standing on the shoulders of so many people. And I have so much family here. My mother Valerian, V. Jean Butler <laughs> Smith, my brother Pepper Valerian, my sister Sean Langston, you saw on my friends. I have Karen here who is representing the wife of Dr. Dior St. Bryant and her sons, the son of my Aunt Elaine. Butler Bryant, if she isn't in the History Hall of Fame yet, she needs to be. <laughs> Representing Aunt Lane. So many friends and so much family. It is unbelievable that you all have paid so much tribute to my family. Now, it's so meaningful to me that this is the 20th anniversary, an important anniversary, and I'm the only uh, one being inducted this evening. Oh, that's fabulous. <laughs> I love being solo, it's fabulous. I always have to share the stage with so many actors. I would like to know how you all feel about this situation and why you are letting me know, could you please like and share this video and subscribe to Geneva's Closet if you haven't already done so right here on YouTube. And you can follow me on Facebook at what? At Geneva's Closet. And you can email me at Geneva's Closet 22 at gmail.com. You all have a fabulous day and I will talk to you later. Bye.